Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace, a pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. All right, good singing this morning. Have some special music for you at this time. gaze and wonder at the sight. The angels look to heaven to receive their Lord's command. Then a thousand hallelujahs fill the night. Ten thousand hallelujahs explode across the sky. Ten thousand hallelujahs Exalt his name on high. Our God shall reign forever. The host of heaven sings. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Will crown him king of kings. The same struggles up the hill of Calvary. The soldiers scoff and coldly watch him die. The host of hell rejoices as he suffers on the tree. Then the mighty it is finished, splits the sky. Ten thousand hallelujahs Explode across the sky. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Exalt his name on high. Our God shall reign forever. The host of heaven sings. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Ten thousand hallelujahs. Will crown him king of kings. Children, you're dismissed at this time. Thank you, Sheila, for that special, and thank you and Linda both for your instruments today. As they head downstairs, you can open your Bibles this morning to the book of Matthew, where we've been traveling along uh, through this entire book here. We find ourselves today in chapter 21. In the past two weeks, we've been challenged on the topic of serving God, serving him in, evangeliz in evangelizing the lost, putting others first, making disciples and such other things uh, as that. 
God wants to use our church body for his glory. Every person uh, who's a member of this church, our friends who come and, and join with us, we want to get all of us, pastor would like to see all of us involved in the things of the Lord to bring him glory. Uh, to allow this church to be what it's to be, uh, a New Testament church that is a light to this community, to draw people. Let that light draw people from the community to come in uh, to our church that they might join us in the worship of God and in the work of God as well. This morning in the book of Matthew, we're going to find our Lord is on his way to Jerusalem and on his way there, a lot of things happen. We'll look at that as we read in just a moment. But then the Lord is going to, once he gets into Jerusalem, he's going to enter into the temple at Jerusalem. And we'll look at uh, the actions and things that uh, happen there in a the message that I've entitled God's Temple. And it'll make us think about uh, our church building here that we have, that we call Mancelona Baptist Church. And it'll make us think about this. But there's another temple that I'm going to get you focused on today as well as uh, we go through this message, God's Temple. Uh, in verse uh, 1 of chapter 21, the Bible reads, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, Unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And uh, when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Father in heaven, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. I ask your blessing upon it as we look at this passage of scripture that was read in a little bit more. I just would ask that you open our hearts and our minds to your word, to your truth, dear God, that we might be blessed by it, that we might look at our own hearts and our own minds and, and Lord, uh, see if we're in agreement with what you uh, would have us to do, and we'll give you the praise and the thanks as you guide us this morning here. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. These verses here that Pastor just read, 1 to 11, are about Christ's entry into Jerusalem. Remember from last week, I think I announced, we're about 30 days or so from him being crucified. And now he's coming into Jerusalem. And they're beginning to recognize who he truly is and making the announcement of that. Of that. And uh, it was a grand thing back then to take place. He hadn't received this before, but now he is multiple. Tunes of people are involved in his arrival. I think of it as the red carpet rollout, okay? Uh, and so they're doing different things as he's coming in. They're laying their clothes on the ground where the ass would uh, carry uh, our Lord, and, and some cut and spread uh, tree branches all over his pathway uh, as well. And some would use those palms to, to fan him as he was coming into the city. And not only did they get involved in this, but they all got in, involved in crying out loud praises to Jesus Christ, calling him a king and a prophet. And rightly so, he is a prophet, priest, and a king. In the coming chapters, as we're going to move along through there, uh, through these, we're going to find out uh, he is going to be rejected. Now he's being greatly, uh, you know, welcomed into the city, but it's not going to be long after this. He only got 30 days. He's going to be greatly rejected and crucified 
and uh, will shed his blood on the cross for all of mankind. Uh, and so it's quite the reception that he is receiving here uh, today. And uh, look at verse 12. It goes on, this, you know, Christ enters into Jerusalem, but now we're going to see that Christ, once he's there, he enters into the temple of God. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought or, or bought in the uh, temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, the temple was God's house in that day. And so that's where people went. Uh, they went there to hear scripture read. They went there to worship. Uh, they're supposed to be going there uh, to pray. Note how he reacted when our Lord walked in there, though, and saw all the corruption that was going on in the, in the uh, temple. Uh, he immediately began to uh, act upon those who were involved in it. He cast out the bankers and businessmen, dumped all their ill-gained money on the ground, and I dare not to say, I don't think anybody went after it, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, in John, a couple of years earlier than this, Jesus had went in a, a, a temple as well. John recorded this in uh, chapter 2 of the Gospel of John. He said, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew their tables. What was Jesus doing? Well, he's cleaning house. And uh, so he's uh, trying to uh, mess up all the things that they were doing. And his first announcement, you know, it is supposed to be a house of prayer. And look what you've done to it, all the things that are taking place in here. And Jesus gives a description of the temple of God in verse 13. He says here, And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Boy, was he mad. Righteous indignation, he was mad, but for the righteousness sake. The Lord's house was being uh, polluted, and Jesus went in, and he began to uh, teach them. He began to, uh, you know, clean things up on his own, making a, a scene there so others would see how important it was of what he was doing. Think of our own church building here as a place of prayer as well. We come here, we pray regularly on Wednesday nights. Uh, we pray throughout all of our times when we're together. We'll have our different times of prayer. Wednesday night was more specifically uh, meant for a prayer, prayer time when we, we get out our prayer prompter and we, we got a whole bunch of prayers that we'll pray, uh, pray regularly for. But uh, one of the main purposes of the temple was prayer. And Jesus was focusing on that at this time specifically. And uh, they had polluted it with all their ungodly activities, and the Lord uh, didn't like that uh, at all. I wonder, though, what God thinks about our church today as well. You know, that temple of, of the first century had their purpose. Uh, the church today in the you know 2021 has its purpose as well. There's several things I just put here in my notes, but uh, I wonder what the Lord thinks about our church today. Uh, according to the Bible, you and I as church members, the first thing is the church is the pillar and ground of truth. But do we really treat it that way? Or do we just come and, and listen to God's words and say, well, I, I heard a message today, but is it strengthening you as a pillar of this church? Uh, the church is to be a pillar and ground of the truth. We know God's word is that ground of truth, but you and I are part of that. Secondly, this is where we gather the worship. But have we been doing that the right way? You know, maybe somebody drove in today in the car and you're mad at your spouse or you're, you're just mad at some situation in your life. Your heart isn't right and you think you're going to come to church and get it right. 
But I think the idea of coming to worship God ought to start at home when we get excited about coming into church and knowing that we're going to uh, sing songs to God's glory and praise him, and we're going to get an opportunity to hear his word and to worship him, to truly in truth and spirit just thank God for who he is. Thank him for his word and let that have an impact on our lives. You know, if you're, if you're coming in and, and uh, you haven't prayed before you come in, you're just rushing to get here, and you got all these other things on your mind, uh, you haven't been preparing yourself to worship the Lord God. Oh, I know, when our kids were home, it was really frantic. My wife and I would scurry about to get them all ready to, to come to church, and sometimes, you know, it would be very difficult uh, to get there on time, uh, and, and let alone to prepare ourselves to come into worship. But we learned as growing Christians that we had to do that, and we began to prepare ourselves for worshiping the Lord. Uh, what did you do last night, Saturday night? Uh, did you watch something on t TV? Maybe you wouldn't want to tell anybody at church about. How did that prepare your hearts for today? You see, there's a preparation when we come to worship God. We can't just come here and turn it on and immediately say, I'm worshiping God now. It doesn't work like that. What are we doing? The third thing is, it's where we preach God's word on Sunday morning. Sunday night, and during the midweek services. This is a place where God's word is, is preached. But I can tell you right now, my heart has been grieved. It truly has been, because on Sunday mornings, our attendance hasn't been what it ought to be. Uh, many will sit home, and, and uh, they won't come to church for different reasons. And I'm not going after anybody. I'm just telling you, as a pastor, my heart has been grieved because of the attendance that we've had on Sunday mornings. And Sunday night is even worse. Uh, the numbers drop way down. I'm still preparing messages. I don't come in and just read something off the top of my head. I, I prepare messages to share with everyone when you come, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, or on Wednesday. And then let's don't talk about Wednesday's attendance because it's nearly dead. And my heart has been grieved over it. And I don't say this in meanness. I say this because, folks, uh, we're to come here to worship God. And that's another uh, sign to me that are we truly doing what God expects us uh, to do. And so think of these things. We as a body are to reach, teach, win, and disciple people for the Lord. Uh, but few are really getting involved in what we're supposed to be doing here. And the, those who are, it seems like they're all wearing about 10 different hats. And the workload is heavy. It's, it's not light. It gets to be heavy. And we got to deal with it. And I know all those who do get involved and do things, uh, they want to do as much as they can for the Lord. But we're just people uh, calling on the Lord, asking him to give us the strength to do these things. But it sure would be nice to have uh, more come regularly and come more regularly and also get involved in the things that we do and, and spread that load out, make that work a little bit lighter and allow the, the joy of the Lord to resound once again here at Mancelona uh, Baptist Church. God's house demands all of us to devote time and energy to participating in the right things in this church building here that please uh, the Lord God and not just our own interest. That's what I'm saying when we come to worship God. It can't be about us and about our own interests. It has to be about him and exalting him here uh, in this place. I thought to myself, oh, what great joy there is in us serving the Lord God. I take a great pleasure in serving God. More pleasure in when I'm able to worship God and to do so unhindered by burdens of the day or of yesterday. I want to come in without things like that on my mind and just uh, worship and praise God uh, with my church family. And it's a privilege to serve in this building where so much of that work is done for the Lord. We come in here to get strength in and, and, and uh, get some scripture that will hold us uh, throughout the week and as we go by day by day so that we can be serving the Lord out in the communities and at home, but also here in uh, the church is where most of that work takes place to carry us out. We have to come back and reload. We have to come back and plug the battery in and get charged again. And if you think your battery is one of those ever-ready batteries that don't go out and you can charge your own battery, uh, I, I'll tell you what, fellowship 
around God's people and God's word is what is going to give us the biggest boost of energy that we need to move along. The Bible says to forsake not the, the uh, fellowship of the brethren. Uh, do not forsake that. There's a reason for that. I want you to think about this. These two verses I just read here. Let us consider our temple. Oh, we talked about God's temple that Jesus went in and turned it all upside down. Pastor's talking about us as a, a temple here. You know, this is our church building. This is where we come in. But I want to talk about our personal temple. I think it's time that we can see a parallel here with what Jesus was doing of this temple that he had to clean up to that of our temple, our own personal temple. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean, do you realize that our bodies are the temple of the Lord? And like our Lord said here, when he entered, uh, when Jesus went into the temple there in our text, he went into that temple. But today, all believers, Jesus has come into our bodies, and our bodies are now that temple. Scripture makes that clear to us, a place of prayer, Praise, purposeful serving, and to be used properly for God. I'm talking about our bodies now. If you're a Christian, Jesus Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. And the Bible teaches us that God is in us. And so we know we have that presence of the Lord in us. We are a temple that God dwells in. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, if we have not been using it properly, perhaps... Now's the time to start cleaning things up a little bit in our own lives, in our personal temples, and not this property that we call Mancelona Baptist Church. Sure, we can come in here and clean the church all up, and I, I really love it when we do. We want our church building to be a beautiful place. When people come, when members come to worship the Lord here, they don't have to be distracted by things that are amiss in the church. When visitors come to visit uh, with us, they don't have to look around and go, boy, nobody's taking care of that. Or, we want to have a place that no distractions are here, and it's a nice uh, place to fellowship and to worship the Lord God. And I appreciate, every, I appreciate everybody who works to that end. We need uh, to have a place like this where we can come and uh, worship the Lord. And to have one that is as pleasant as ours is, is all that much uh, better, I believe, uh, for all of us. And for the Lord as well. It's not busy work. It's work for the Lord. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verse 19. The Bible reads, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, how do we do that if we forsake the assembly of ourselves with one another? Uh, God tells us to... Not forsake our assembly with one another, but then when we do it, are we really doing what God, this says that God is in us. Are we following his lead on this, okay? Uh, you know, I, th I think about myself first. I want to make sure when I'm preaching this, I've already been convicted and, and got myself right uh, with the Lord over whatever message that pastor is preaching. But especially in this one, I find it so important. God's spirit dwells in us. And when we say no to God's word, we grieve the Holy Spirit who is in us. Oh yeah, that's what we do. We can grieve the Holy Spirit, the very eternal spirit of God that is supposed to strengthen us uh, when we allow him to and guide us according to God's word speaks to us. Here's a couple of verses that I found. You might think of these as uh, interesting passages. You might want to write some of these down and consider them as you consider what pastor is, is uh, sharing with you out of uh, chapter 21. Think about Jesus walking in that temple. Think when you were a Christian and God uh, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. What did he find there? Well, he found uh, you and I forgiven of our sins and he came in to make us a new creature. 
one that can glorify him. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you, this is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus, he says that he, meaning God, would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Well, pastor, I can't come to church all the time, or I can't do this kind of work, or I can't, you know, are, you ever run into the no person? Everything is a no. And I, I never want to say no to the Lord. I don't want to be seen by the Lord as the no person. <laughs> Uh, but uh, here we recognize that we are strengthened by the Holy Spirit of God to do what the Lord wants us to do. He'll never call us to do something that he doesn't give us the strength to do. God's in that strengthening business. That's why he put his spirit in us. Think of uh, Paul uh, talking to young Timothy when he said, God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but he's given us a spirit of uh, love, power, and a, a sound mind. And so we can be thankful that the Lord has placed his Holy Spirit in us. 2 Corinthians 4.16 uh, says, Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I talk to myself right away, I'm an old man, my body is perishing. <laughs> where all our bodies are getting, uh, you, as you get older, they begin, you know, that process of getting weaker. We have a real weak vessel here that we go around in. And yet that inner person, because of the presence of God's Holy Spirit in us, renews us every day. Are you getting that renewal? Are you getting that, that pour of the Holy Spirit through you? You know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is for our taking, and we can uh, really enjoy that presence of the Holy Spirit with us. Uh, but it's, it ought to be our Christian attitude, our Christian outlook ought to be renewed every day because of the Holy Spirit in us. That's what Paul was telling the, the Corinthian church as we grow and as we get older. And you may say, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm this old, or, 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 you know, I'm really getting old now. I can't do what I used to do. Well, you cannot deny that, but you can also cannot deny that you're being renewed day by day if you're submitting to the Lord. And he's given you strength to do things. Here's another one, Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Our bodies are a temple where the Trinity exists. God has really worked this out for us in a great way. Uh, and because he is with us, he doesn't want us sitting off somewhere by ourselves all the time. We were talking in our Sunday school this morning. There's no secret Christians. Uh, you, you can't uh, just stay away from church and say, you know, I'll worship God here. Or I'll do this. And I want nothing to do with those people. Oh, okay. Well, you be, if you think like that, you need to be here, okay, and know what God's word says, and have fellowship with one another. Uh, we are uh, the Lord's. We gave up our life for him. That's what Paul was telling the Galatian church here. He says, "Never I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me. 